Junction tables are an incredibly important tool for architecting our Airtable bases. They're what takes your collection of well-organized data and starts to transform it into your own custom-built applications. It also marks your advancement from an Airtable beginner to an intermediate builder. In this video, we're going to take a look at junction tables through the lens of a couple of examples. We'll walk you through how to build them in Airtable and also identify opportunities of where it makes sense to use junction tables within your data. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and this video is part of our Airtable architecture series. You can check out the full free course using the link in the description below. Junction tables come into play when you have two different tables that need to link to one another. If you recall from our video on linked records, we have three primary types of relationships between our tables, one to many, many to one, and many to many. Let's say we have a table of projects and a table of people, and we want to have a many to many relationship between the two, meaning that multiple people can work on a project, but also a person could have multiple projects assigned to them. Now, you could easily set this up in Airtable by making sure that both tables allow linking to multiple records. But here's where the problem happens. Let's say that Zoe's currently working on two projects. On the onboarding project, she's acting as the team lead. But for the website development project, she's acting as the project manager. Well, where do we store that information about her role on a particular project? You might be inclined to make a multi-select on the people table called roles. And within roles, we could select team lead and project manager. But that won't work because we have no way of knowing which of those roles she's currently serving on each project, simply that she's acting in those roles for some unknown number of projects. Likewise, you might be inclined to create multiple linked relationship fields on the projects table. One field for project manager, one field for team lead, one field for developer, and so on. And this works okay in some circumstances, but it also has a number of limitations. One limitation is that for every new role that you have on a project, now you need to create a new field. And this starts to get pretty cluttered over time. Or what if you have different types of projects, but you only need the developer role on website projects, but not on internal projects? Well, now you're adding a bunch of extra fields that don't even get used most of the time. Another issue is that the data gets pretty ugly on the other side of the relationship, on the people table. Now you have corresponding relationship fields like project manager four and team lead four, and it's not easy to see all of the projects that each team member is working on. So this is where we get to the need for a junction table. The simplest way to describe a junction table is where we have two tables and we want to create a many to many relationship between them like we talked about for projects and people. But we want to store additional information on the relationship itself. In this case, the person's role on that project. A junction table is a third table that we will introduce that will connect projects to people, but also allow us to store additional fields of information. When we give the junction table a name, it's usually something that represents the intersection of these two tables. So I might call this junction table something like project resources or project team members, where projects obviously refers to the projects table and resources or team members refers to the people table. Now there are three important pieces that we need for our junction table to work. We'll show you first in a diagram here and then walk through how to set this up inside of Airtable. The first is a new linked relationship between the junction table and the projects table. This will always be a many to one relationship where one project can have multiple project resources. The second is a new linked relationship between the junction table and the people table. And this also will always be a many to one relationship where a person can be multiple project resources. And the third thing we need is going to be any data that you want to store on the junction table itself. Using our example, we could add a single select of role to the project resources table. But we're not limited to just a single field. Maybe we want to know how long this person will be assigned on this project. So in addition to a role, we could also add start and end dates to capture how long they act in that capacity on the project. Try to commit this pattern to memory as this will become one of the most common data structure tools in your toolkit in Airtable. So inside of Airtable, you'll notice that we have our projects table and we've got our people table, and now we need to create our junction table. So let's go ahead and press the plus button and we'll start from scratch. We'll give this a name project resources, and we don't want the records to be called projects because most of the time we're going to be adding them from the projects table. So we want to actually call these resources. So we can search here for resources, add that, and we'll save it. I don't really care about these three fields here, so let's just go ahead and hide them. 
Now let's create our linked relationship. So we'll link to another record, and this is going to be our link to projects. We're going to call this project singular because remember it's a many to one relationship it's just going to link to a single project and then we need to make sure to turn this off that we're not allowing linking to multiple records let's create that field we're prompted here to add lookup fields we don't really need that for this use case but you might in other times that we are adding junction tables so let's skip this let's actually duplicate this field and we can click into it We'll call this one resource, or you could call it person or assignee, whatever makes sense to you. And instead of link to projects, let's link now to the people table. Again, we wanna make sure that we are not linking to multiple records and we'll save that. And then the last thing that we need to do here is to add our role field. So we'll call it role, we'll choose single select. Let's add some options. Once we have our options, we can create our field. And now here's where we could have our project and do as we described before. We have an onboarding project. And our resource is Zoe here, and her role on this project is going to be a team lead. And then we have our website development project. We've got her again as a resource, but this time she is going to be the project manager. Now you'll notice here that the primary field is name. It's just a text field. I'd probably go ahead and change this to a formula. So we could do something like have our project and then a pipe, and then we could have our resource field here. And so that's all we need to do to actually set up our junction table. But let's go for a moment to our projects table. And on our projects table, we have our project resources. But I got to tell you, before interfaces came out, this used to be a really annoying user experience to have junction tables. Because what you'd have to do is you'd be on a project and you'd say, OK, let's go ahead and add some of these project resource records. But users would get confused because then they're looking at existing records when in reality they need to make a new record. So from here you could click a plus button and then it would open up this form and then you'd have to fill out the information and save it. And then you'd have to do that again for each resource and it would take lots of button clicks and just be really confusing. But I wanna show you how easily we can make that confusion go away. So let's hop over into our interfaces. From here I have a really simple project review page which just shows some information from our project. Now, again, interfaces, you can make them complex. You can make them beautiful. You can do all sorts of things that you want. We're just going to keep this really simple for now. So I've got this project review. I can see my onboarding project and my website development project. Let's go ahead and add a field here. And here's where we've got our project resources. Let's click on that. And then here you can see that it displays as a field. We don't really want to do that. If we click on this, we've got an option instead of field to display it as a view, which now has a list view that we can see. And so already you can see it's starting to look a little bit better. Now, right here, you can see we've got the name and this really isn't helpful. It's pretty redundant because we don't want someone typing that in. It's just that formula. So we can click on this to choose what fields we want visible. We're actually going to turn off that name. We already have resource. Let's add that role. So that's visible here. And then if we want to, we can just kind of shrink this over. So now we can see both the resource and the role within the same amount of space here. And then if we scroll down here, let's turn on the options to edit these records in line. And we're going to allow people to add and delete records in line. And this is what's going to make this a way better user experience. So let's publish this. And now you can see this from the perspective of your users. So you're on a project and you want to be able to add people to the project. Look what I can do. I simply add a resource. This is all in line. I choose the person that I want. And in this case, Max is a developer. There you go. It's that easy. Now we can add new resources here as we go with additional roles for the team. And it's a much better user experience. You don't have confused users asking, wait, how do I add a resource record? They don't have to think about that architecture at all. This gives the users what they need, but then in the background, what's actually being saved to the database then for our project resources is that structured data the way that we need that to appear. Let's talk about another really common example that we see all the time in Airtable. We're going to use an example of invoices, but this would pertain to sales orders, purchase orders, opportunities, or really any kind of sales-oriented document. If I have an invoice, nine times out of 10, we're not just selling a single product to a customer. If you look at an invoice you might have received, you'll notice that there's almost always a grid or list of line items on the invoice which display multiple products, quantities, and prices. Using what you know now about junction tables, you might want to pause the video for a moment and think how you might structure this in Airtable using junction tables. First are tables. We know that invoices is one table, and the second table that we have is going to be products. 
and we ultimately want that many-to-many -many relationship between invoices and products. We can have multiple products on an invoice, and a product can be sold multiple times on various invoices. That's why we need a many-to-many -many relationship. The invoice will contain attributes like a link to the customer, an invoice date, and a total amount. The product will contain attributes like the product name and its price. So what exactly belongs on the junction table? More often than not, we'd give the table a name like invoice line items. And the most important field that we need here is quantity. Because quantity can't live on the invoices table or the products table. It represents the amount of a given product for a given invoice. The other important field we would want here is amount. The amount is equal to the quantity from the invoice line times the price of that product. Let's check this out in Airtable. Here you can see we have two of our tables created. We've got our invoices and our products. And like you'd expect, we need to go ahead and add our new junction table. I'm going to call this invoice lines. And we can choose to call this a line item. I would do this instead of invoice because an invoice is that main parent record, where instead here we want to have those individual line items. Let's go ahead and press save. Again, we're gonna go ahead and hide those additional fields. We'll create our linked records. This one will be to invoice and we'll link to our invoices and we'll make sure to turn this off. Here again, we don't need to add any lookup fields and then we'll duplicate this and we'll call this one product. We'll link to, instead of our invoices, we'll connect that one to products. We're not doing anything here. We'll add our quantity field now and we'll choose a field of number. And we don't really need any decimal places for this. So we'll have zero decimal places. Let's save that. And then we also talked about having an amount field. Well, in order to have that amount, which we'd have as a formula, we need to be able to get the actual price for that item. Well, to do that, we need to add a lookup field so that we can actually pull the active price from the product table. So let's go ahead and add a new lookup. We'll click on our product and add lookup fields. Here we can see the price. So I'll just toggle that on and we'll add it. Okay, let's do an example here. So we'll select from an invoice and then we will choose a product and this should now populate automatically this lookup with the correct price amount. Now I do wanna let you know that for this example, we're simplifying the process a little bit. Most of the time you wouldn't want to use a direct lookup because in the future, if the price changes, you wouldn't want that to change your old invoices. So just consider this more for understanding lookups. If you really wanna get more in depth with how we'd handle pricing, we'll talk about that in a different video. So now we have our quantity and let's say I put five in that field and somehow we need to then multiply the price by the quantity to get the amount for that line item. So let's create a new field and we'll call this amount and we'll use a formula field. And we're simply gonna take the price and then we'll multiply that by the quantity. Let's create that field. And so here you see we get an amount. Let's go ahead and actually change the way that this displays so we can go into our formatting. And instead of a number here, this is where we will go the route of currency. So we can save our currency field and there we go. We don't have that extra rounding. We get the dollar sign. Now we're good to go. So let's go ahead over to our interfaces. And here we've got just this simple invoice creator. We've got additional fields that we would add to this, but right now we're going to do exactly what we did last time. And we're gonna take those invoice lines to display them. We'll click on our invoice lines. And again, we wanna display this as a view. We'll click into our fields. And again, I don't need that name to be visible. So we'll turn that off. We'll have our product. And then we need to make sure that we've got our price just for visibility purposes. We'll have our quantity and then our amount. Let's maybe move the quantity ahead of our price here. We'll scroll down, we'll let these be editable in line and we can add new items in line as well. Let's publish this. And now let's add some line items to our invoice. So we have our invoice, we can choose from our products. Here's our RoboVac. We're gonna put in that we want five of those. When I tab off, look how quickly that updates that amount. So even though it's a formula and it's dependent on this information, that's updating pretty much in real time which creates a really nice experience. If you're creating sales orders or invoices or purchase orders, now you've got really this generator that you can use directly on the page, be able to add multiple different items to. Let's choose a different product here and we'll choose 10 of those and that's gonna update it. Now, of course, those of you who are more familiar with Airtable will know, okay, well then let's go ahead and do a roll up of the amounts. Maybe we apply some tax and we can do all of those things as well. If you wanna learn a little bit more of the details, we have a specific video on building an invoice generator, which you can check out as well. Let's do a quick recap. When do we use junction tables? 
when we have two tables where we want to have a many-to-many -many relationship, but we also need to store information about the relationship itself. How do we build a junction table? We create a new intermediary table and give it a name that represents that intersection between the two tables. We build a many-to-one relationship between the junction table and the first table, as well as a many-to-one relationship between the junction table and the second table. Then we add any necessary fields to our junction table. So hopefully this helps you think through your Airtable workflow and potentially identify situations where a junction table is going to help better structure your data. If you have any questions about your own Airtable project, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.